Welcome back to the sideboard here at the StarCityGames.com Open Series in Atlanta. I'm Nick Miller alongside Robert Wright. How you doing? Very good. Very good indeed. The last time we were in Atlanta, you top eight at the Legacy uh, Open with mm -hmm. Burn. Today, you're playing a red-white aggro deck in Standard. You're off to a 5-0 start. It's sort of like what Brad, play, Brad Nelson played at the Pro Tour a while back, but you have made some nice changes to this deck for Ash Cloud Phoenix. This card mm -hmm. has been kind of under the radar, but I've seen you play a few games with it, and that card's been insane. Yeah, Ash Cloud Phoenix is basically, um, it forces my opponent to always two for one. And it's funny, I've been playing a little bit of Hearthstone recently, and like two for ones are just so important in that game, and that was kind of inspired into this game and just mm -hmm. my experiences through that game as well. I don't know. You've got the 4-1 body for four mana. Of course, when it dies, you get the morph back. Also, I've seen you just run it out as a morph before, so mm -hmm. a lot of options there, and it's very good against just this field of one for one removal. There's actually uh, there's been a couple situations where um, I played this card as just a morph creature to play around Mogus's Marauder. I did that round one to make sure I could block the Intimidate, okay. so my uh, opponent couldn't kill me that turn. A little secret tech there on the morphs. Yeah. Of course, people might think it's something else like the Instigator or some other mm -hmm. morph card, but yeah, very good. I've seen it start to rise in popularity, but I haven't seen it at four of yet. Mm -hmm. And I just saw you play against a Jeskai aggro deck, and it just was a house. Yeah, the card's just insane. Like, I was playing against the uh, Jeskai Fireworks or Tempo deck. Or right. Um, and the matchup was basically completely decided by who drew more Phoenixes, because it was constantly play a threat, remove it. But if you played a Phoenix, you had to use two removal yep. spells just to get rid of it. And that just completely defined how the games went. All right. So your creature suite on top of the Phoenix is four Rabble Master, four Seeker of the Way, three Bream As, two Stormbred Dragon, and then four Raise the Alarm. The other card that's just been an all-star and has been just tearing up tables, Bream As. Mm -hmm. uh, Bream As just has so few ways to answer him, and he's just such a huge body. This deck has like a little bit of a tough time against aggro. Like we have turn two Seeker of the Way into turn three Brian Maz or Ravel Master, which is usually really good. Right. But just the fact that I can just sit on Brian Maz and just never have to do anything against like a completely filled up board on my opponent's side is really good. Until I'm able to stabilize with cards like Phoenix and uh, the Stormbreath Dragon. Right. It's just so hard to kill in this format. Stoke the Flames is really the only clean answer on top of like Chain of the Rocks. But of course, that's limited in what type of decks you can play it in. You, of course, have four Chain of the Rocks yourself as well as two, just about called it Oblivion Ring, Yeah, <laughs> Banishing Light. Might as well be. Yeah. So your, your removal is that on top of a burn package of four Stoke the Flames and four Lightning Strikes. Um, I really wanted, uh, I think the four Stoke the Flames to four Lightning Strike are just something you have to play in most red decks right now, mm -hmm. just because the range that you can get with those spells is just, it can kill almost everything in the format, sub a Siege Rhino right. or a plus Sarkin. Like, the cards are just so powerful, especially with Raise Alarm. Um, there's been a lot of turns where I'll just go, end of your turn, raise the alarm into Stoke the Flames, your uh, Knuckle Blade. Um, Chain of the Rocks as well has just been outstanding. Just one mana, like, it is basically Path to Exile in this deck because it play eight mountains right. and a two Evolving Wilds just to be able to fetch them out. It's just... Unlike a lot of the decks that are trying to crab Chain of the Rocks into their decks, you actually have a plethora of mountains you're not going to have an issue finding one or having to search one up when you actually need it. That's very true. On top, you know, you got Seek of the Way with a bunch of things that enable it. Oh, you yeah. Know, raise the Alarm, really good. Chain the Rocks, all very cheap, so you can continue applying pressure to the board. Mm -hmm. One of Hammer of Perforos. What's this doing in here? So, I, I really like playing one of in my deck. And it's just kind of always been like a thing, like uh, I played a Bant control deck for a while that played a one of Pithing you. I think that's actually how I met you. And um, I really wanted a card that, because when I read Ashcloud Phoenix, and I was actually talking to you about this, uh, card looks like it says haste on it. Yeah. But turn three hammer into turn four Ashcloud Phoenix is just insane. As well as the fact that the card just outgrinds a lot of the matchups that would seem really bad, like the Obzon decks or okay. the Devotion decks. It just helps me create that pressure and keep things moving. So have you been in a game where, yet where you need Hammer to just churn out three threes, or um, is it really just the haste? I've been, I've only drawn the card twice today, but one of the games that I drew it, I was uh, really greedy with it. Um, I always, it's always a good idea to have five lands out, so you can cast like Storm Breath Dragon, or like Brimez, Seeker of the Way, or just all the different cards that you can cast. Mm -hmm. But I would keep blowing up my fifth land just to make a 3-3, uh, three, three, and then i get rewarded with drawing another land. So that was just kind of <laughs> like the lucky moment of the day for right. me. Yeah, very powerful to just chain of creatures there on top of your already powerful cards mm. that have 
you know, trouble killing in this format. No, yeah. Sideboard, you've got some extra banishing lights, suppression field type things, or suspension mm -hmm. field, sorry. Along with magnum spray, just cheap removal. Yeah. You've got a four of hushwing griff. Where's the hippo griff doing its work? So, there's like the obvious answers that are uh, Siege Rhino and most yeah. of the Abzan cards like Wingmate Rock and stuff like that. But something I noticed when I was playing this deck on Moto and just coming up with the list was I could not beat Hornet Queen. Okay. It's just absolutely impossible. Ashcloud Phoenix can't get past that card, and one of my worst matchups, I think, is the Green Devotion deck. And so just being able to bring four Hushwing Griffs and just shut down the majority of their cards is oh, yeah. super important. Taking out Nylea's Disciple on top of the Hornet Queen and all mm -hmm. those shenanigans. You've got an extra hammer in here, so mm -hmm. when you want to just have extra resiliency. Yeah. Uh, against the mid-range decks, a hammer is just absurd. Just being able to grind out the games, especially against control as well. Um, Blue-black control and blue-white control, I've seen some forms of that. Mm -hmm. uh, just have a really tough time dealing with constant 3-3s. Three yeah. It also makes your top decks a lot better. Right. you got two Sarkins in the sideboard. What's the idea behind the Sarkins in the board versus the Stormboat Dragons in the main? So, I was expecting a decent amount of Abzan and a decent amount of uh, the Jeskai deck today. Mm -hmm. The Jeskai Fireworks deck. And um, I think Stormbreath Dragon is really good at getting past Manus Rider and blocking uh, Brimaz himself. I was, I was actually expecting a lot of Brimaz. I'm surprised I haven't seen too much of him today. Yeah. Um, Sarkin's good, though, against the control decks when they need more threats. And there's also um, a lot of situations where, like, certain cards will just be bad. Like, sometimes Brimaz just isn't that great against, like, the uh, mid-range decks. Yeah. Where they already have a ton of ways to kill your Brimaz. So it's just good to just throw a Planeswalker in there and just keep going. As well as just bringing him in for the fact that he can be a removal spell on top of Storm right. okay. Glare of Heresy, just a very good card in this f just wide open format where most of the decks are multicolors, thus having white, you know, Rhinoceros, Mantis Rider, all of the cards. Even hits, you know, Chain of the Rocks. So Glare of the Heresy's just been really, really good for me today. Um, I've been able to exile uh, Sorens and Elspeth with it. It's just, it is a very powerful card, and I think if you're playing white, you have to play at least two in your board. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's probably like the most powerful underplayed card right now. Like, mm -hmm. just hits so many things. Yeah. You've got an erase. Everyone's playing enchantments of some form. Mm -hmm. It's a good card to have. What would you like to just keep playing against as the day goes on? You know, what's the bread and butter for this deck to match up against? So, I really, really like um, something I've noticed with this deck is you get a lot of. Uh, like the matchups are usually 60-40 in your favor. Like they're not hugely in your favor. It's all about how you play them and stuff like that. And that's what I like about this deck is um, you get a lot of really interesting games and complex games. And a lot of decision making going on, which is something I haven't really been getting too much of in standard right now right. from some of the decks I've been playing. So I'd be fine just playing more Jeskai and more of the deck I played last round. Just fun, even games where like I can hedge a little bit because I made a correct decision when my opponent didn't right. or something like that. Fun even games where you get a Phoenix that continues to come back no matter what they do. I hope so. I hope I just draw two of that card every game. All right. The card is pretty sweet. Thanks for sitting mm -hmm. down with me. This deck is awesome. Right. I Thank wish you the much. best of luck. You're 5-0 so far, so we got five more rounds to go. Mm -hmm. Hopefully see you in the top eight here. Hopefully I can just win an F&M. You know, it's not that hard. <laughs> uh, I guess. Everyone stay tuned to StarCityGames.com all weekend long for the action here in Atlanta.